Hi everybody, Lawrence Moroni from The Developer Show. I'm here at the TensorFlow Developer Summit, and it's my honor to speak with Justine Tunney. Justine, you're the dev lead for TensorBoard. I am, thank and, you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And Justine, you've just done a great talk on TensorBoard and on the plugin ecosystem for TensorBoard. It's, it's a very vibrant ecosystem. Could oh, you tell yes. us about it? Um, and the debugger in particular. Absolutely. We've had many amazing plugins developed uh, for TensorBoard over the past year. Okay. And the featured plugin was the debugger plugin, which sort of gives you an x-ray into your models yep. um, in terms of black box explainability. TensorBoard originally had, um, I, I guess you could say, um, features like scalars okay. that were the flashlight. This is an x-ray because it actually allows you to step and set breakpoints interactively in your model. Okay. And you can literally watch the tensors as they flow in real time. It's pretty <laughs> incredible. So people will believe we call it TensorFlow for a reason now, because you can see them, like you say, flowing yes, in real yes. time. So cool. And, and speaking of tensors flowing, like um, one of the illuminating things about this debugger plugin is that it operates on the actual graph. A lot okay. of the times when we write um, code for TensorFlow or machine learning models, we're using really high-level frameworks and libraries mm. like Keras and Estimator. And underneath those frameworks and the nice Python code are now Swift code. There's the reality of the graph through right. which the tensors flow. Mm -hmm. And that's what this debugger operates on. It lets you see the reality beneath the abstractions okay. when you need to. Okay. Even though we love the abstractions. Th that's yeah. super cool. But it's just the thought of like, you know, as a developer, like I load my data into a model, train my model, that kind of yeah. thing, and then run my model against test data. And you had that whole black box. I couldn't really figure out if I'd optimize my model or not. But yeah. you're saying well, I can Speaking of uh, optimizing models, like one interesting thing is there is now a supervised training plugin that was contributed by Francois Luz at IBM. Ah, okay. And this is part of the embedded projector plugin. He sent us some pull requests because we do our development in the open. Right. And what it allows you to do is interactively assign labels to your data set and you allow the algorithms such as TSNE to sort of reveal the structure of your data. Wow. And, and you edit the labels as you go along. It's pretty cool. That, what was that called again? It, 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 um, you can search for, I believe it was called Supervised Training with TensorBoard. Okay. It's a, there's an IBM blog post that explains it. It's okay. part of TensorBoard's embedding projector plugin. Cool. We'll put a link in the description below for yeah. people watching it on YouTube. So so you've mentioned the debugging, you've mentioned this other plugin. There's a massive, vibrant ecosystem, right, of plugins. And Indeed there is. So and in many ways, like the role of the TensorBoard team and my latest, the role developer, is to provide a really sturdy, solid foundation for all these contributions from many teams and a few companies with which we've been entrusted. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like we've got a rock solid fo uh, build foundation where okay. you can actually build your code in China, America, any other nation. Nice. And we do a lot of things. Like we actually pack 10 web app, like more than 10 web applications into a tiny two megabyte package that oh, wow. doesn't have a whole lot of dependencies and most of them are like sort of schlepped into the package. Yeah. Usually the small ones have a lot yeah. of dependency, so this is nice. So. I know, and when I first joined the TensorBoard team, we actually had, in terms of our tooling, over 900 dependencies. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I managed to pare that down somewhat thanks to the benefits of Bazel. Uh, that would just take a long time to compile with all those dependencies. No, right? uh, it, um, it actually, TensorBoard actually compiles very fast. Oh, it does? Yeah, cool. like you can compile TensorBoard and download all its dependencies and maybe five to ten seconds or oh, so. Oh, wow. Okay, Yeah, cool. yeah it's not like TensorFlow where oh, uh, where it takes 30 minutes. Okay, nice. Uh, speaking of which, if you've got a 96-core cloud VM, <laughs> it takes five. <laughs> well, it's worth waiting for. Yeah, <laughs> it so, is. Uh, so say I want to be a, a, a plug-in developer and I want to yeah. start building my own plug-in. I've, I've come up with a great idea for a great scenario. How would I get started doing this? Well, the best way to get started is we have a repo Call on GitHub called TensorFlow slash TensorBoard hyphen plugin hyphen example. And this is an independent repository. It does not vendor TensorBoard or TensorFlow. And what it and, it and it basically shows you how you can configure Bazel to do a custom static build of TensorBoard okay. where you can do whatever you want in a separate repo. Nice. Yeah, so nice. this is basically our escape hatch okay. that um, says. Because with the security and various other requirements of TensorBoard, 
sometimes merging things upstream um, can not always be approved. Right. But we provide this alternative. Yeah. yeah. But we are, of course, open and welcome to accepting contributions on our main GitHub. And you'll notice inside um, our main GitHub repository, there's a list of plugins, and each one has a README with documentation on how it works. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of The Developer Show. Don't forget to check the description below, and we'll put all the links that we spoke about today. And thanks so much, Justin. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.